happy now all is now it's a gift to be in the present the fresh stage signing back in here putting out my perspective into the cloud of the collective to expand the collective consciousness you're not tuning into the mind of an algin and moon slash aries moon and it is a jupiter day slash in his gemini hours and i got a special guest today introduce yourself my brother peace to the gods and goddesses I'm Master X, Disciple of the Most High Chief Baba G. Three, three to three, three is free. You've now entered the minds of the Most High, specifically my chart, my avatar. My sun is Leo and my moon is Virgo. It's an honor. Okay. All right, so what's going on is right now, we got moon and Pisces and sun in Gemini, okay? So with this, this plan now is a square 190 degree angle where we got, we have to learn how to react and respond towards our actions, okay? So basically with the moon being in Pisces, you're gonna have to, you know, we're gonna be feeling emotions and feelings of the dream realm, the subconscious, like you said earlier, you know, you had you said you had Uriel come to him in his dream type shit. You know, so Facts. basically this is how the this uh astrology works, you know, as far as you know, the moon. The moon governs our emotional body, our yin realm. Look at squirrels and shit. Yeah, the moon governs our yin realm, our emotions, you know, whatever is deep within. You know, and it, it can it can come to you in messages and also what's so significant about the moon right now is that is is also accompanied by Saturn and and what's it called Neptune okay in Pisces so that Neptune you know whenever Neptune makes an alignment with the moon you will have some sort of uh dream or you will let's say if you have a negative alignment towards the moon it's gonna affect your sleeping habits it's gonna be hard for you to sleep but if it's like i'm making a positive alignment you know you would you know naturally sleep and in your dreams you'd be able to remember them you'd be able to recall them you know shit like that because moon represents the subconscious and neptune represents illusion like she teaches mm -hmm illusion slash delusions you know so uh and the moon and neptune are both in pisces so uh so with moon being in pisces it's also we got the stellium in pisces we got a stellium in aries and we also have a stellium in gemini okay so with it making this alignment with the sun this 90 degree alignment with the sun we're basically in this in this gemini season you know we're in gemini season in that hold on let me see the degree so nine degrees all right still in the first deacon so you know it's more geared towards you know balancing minds back and forth with one another you know communication you know this is this is the square so it's like how can you relate and artic articulate your dreams you know or your subconscious or your imagination this is the this is the learning process we're learning how we can put to words and articulate what's in our yin realm and you know we could and with this, you could also uh, do it through creativity as well. You know, this is another thing. But, and moon squaring Venus, moon squaring Venus, this is the learning process again with our, our love matters. Our love, our love, our relationship so learning how to react and respond towards love and relationship 
as far as you know moon being in pisces venus being in gemini okay so for venus being in gemini it's it's more like to really say what what you love and say really speak out anything that that brings you pleasure you know you, anyone with venus and gemini they could talk for days about the things they love you know and yeah that's just how it play out and with moon being in pisces it's 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 just more in the subconscious and moving with the ebb and flow rather than talking big time you know so with this one thing yeah. important i wanted to add on to that is that um most communication is in the subconscious realm. 5% is your conscious mind. And 95% is your subconscious mind. T teaches that feeling is knowing. Peep this. 15% of communication is verbal. It's like speaking and articulation through word. But 95 but 85 percent is nonverbal. So in this time, especially in these times, focus on body language and energy. Real shit. <clears throat> Real shit. So yeah, uh, we got Jupiter, okay? Jupiter again, moon is uh, squaring Jupiter. Okay, so this is learning how to grow okay learn how to react and respond with your your knowledge and wisdom and how you teach and and yeah teach and learn so yeah and travel to some extent and long distance travel uh mentally or internally you know so this is a uh, jupiter being in gemini Okay, so this is the, like I spoke in one of my other videos, you know, the expansion of your um, vocabulary, you know, the expansion of your vocabulary and learning <clears throat> certain, learning new words and how, you know, they sort of fit in how they work for you in your reality. You know, you might have some new word that come up, you know, and you know, you didn't know what it was at first and then you had to look it up. And then it's just, so you sort of knew it, but it's just another word for what you knew type shit. You know, so it's just like, that's just how it plays out because Expansion. with the moon, Squaring Jupiter, we're just gonna be have to learn how to minor for or have minor frustrations on how to react and respond towards growing, you know, growing or how we feel about growth, growing our vocabulary, you know, in this area of life. And also, as I run this down, depending on wherever house you got all these planets transiting at, this is where it's gonna affect you at. Okay, so uh, we got Moon opposing Black Moon Lilith. Okay, Moon opposing Black Moon Lilith. Well, before I get there, let me just say the Moon is gonna conjunct Saturn and Pisces. I'm I'm gonna take care of that first because. You know, I want to deal with the major planets. So moon conjunct Saturn and Pisces. Again, this is the, the conjunctions can play all. You know, they can play as uh, sextiles, uh, trines. They can play depending on wherever, if, if wherever, whatever house they're transiting at. And... The, your, the seeds you planted and how you're feeling as far as your emotions in this situation. Moon 
is going to conjunct Saturn and Pisces. So it's going to have all these, you're going to have the feelings of wanting to react and respond towards gaining some sort of stability, security to stand on, you know, as far as your dreams, you know, because Saturn being in Pisces, you know, this makes us want to take our dreams a lot more seriously. You know, Saturn's Saturn is about discipline and seriousness. So when you take your dream seriously, you know, you can sort of be on the energy on the right side of energy at this time. So, uh, Moon is also gonna conjunct. Never mind, that's that's uh, not a major planet. But Moon is sextiling Mercury. Oh, in Taurus, Mercury being in Taurus. I can feel that. Okay. So this is the react, the 60 degree angle for opportunities, opportunities to react and respond towards your communication in a, in a communicative way. As far as people, Mercury being a Taurus, people's minds are on the money, you know? And you can manifest some money at this time, like, you know? Shit. Shit. <laughs> this nigga just found some money on the floor not too long ago, like, so Mercury, Mercury being in uh, Taurus, you know, it sort of shapes this illusion as far as Mercury being the mind, you know, into this Taurus energy, these, aka May Sun, the May Sun, M-A-Y-S-U-N, Sun, you know, so that sort of like shapes the illusion into these material things that we value, aka value Venus, you know, towards being ruled by Venus, you know? So with this- And the square and the moon, yeah. like that. Yeah, so this is, it's actually sex town in the moon. Sex town, sex town. Yeah, so uh, it's the, uh, re the more positive, alignment, but the opportunities to act and respond to manifest what's on your mind, which is money, okay? And moon being in Pisces sort of like amplifies the, the subconscious in a way where, you know, whatever's on our mind and our, our deep waters are, are inside our internals, you know, can easily be, be Manifesting and shown in, in our faces at this time a lot faster when the moon is in Pisces, you know? So, yeah. You got, you got anything you want to say? Just look at it. These are all for today right here? Yeah. Yeah, I've been feeling that. This, this right is here, my says, chart, actually. Oh, wow. That's, it's connected to my chart, so... This is the transits right here. Mm-hmm. So... And don't forget that Saturn is in Pisces. So all of your karma is going to be coming back to you during this time. All your karma, everything that you did is coming back. And if you was planting seeds in the right places then you will be growing abundance. But if you haven't, you're gonna be choked. Understanding will be desolate. This, and love is understanding. So what's understood don't gotta be explained because the chosen understand. The mission is to convict the weak and collect the elite. So when we apply this knowledge and we stay, that's how you know how to stay in tune with nature, with Netta, with God, all the planets, everything that is, and by just applying it, this is why this is so important, by actually tapping into astrology, because this is the most efficient way to tap into nature, rather than, because we're coming from the age of Pisces to Aquarius, rather than following in a more mythical, dreamy connection to Earth, connection to nature type way. Now, in the age of Aquarius, we actually have the information to practically apply this and get more, like, this is why science is my religion, 
to get a more potent experience and outcome from the application of knowledge and more in tune like no other no other no other religion no other religion but science astrology is getting you in tune with the actual planets which is real everybody's giving you a mythical being you know but we're transitioning from that and we're coming into science go check out bruce lipton this is how we tune into epigenetics getting in tune with the environment so remember right now saturn is in pisces this is the time where all your karma is coming back to you. And this is another chance and opportunity. It's when we came back into the earth plane. Another chance and opportunity to become our greatest version. I love myself. Real shit. I think as far as... Flick the okay, so three. Got... Okay, so we got Moon, Sextile, and Uranus in, in Taurus. So this is... a. Uh, Reacting and responding towards how to be a unique individual as far as, you know, uh, having, uh, gaining material, maternal, something, security or stability in a unique way. Okay. And moon being in Pisces. So this is, uh, the sex styles or the opportunities to react and respond to to be unique as far as this Taurus energy. Okay, so Moon is, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because we got Moon opposing Black Moon, Lilith and Virgo. So this is the opposition. Okay, so the, the when Black Moon, Lilith being in Virgo and Moon being in uh, Pisces, you know, the, this is 180 degree angle, the 180 degree angle for feeling at odds or opposite or having obstacles. Okay, so you might feel at odds towards being embarrassed at this time as far as your, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, your work, your health, your routine, you know? So this is a positive opposition, you know? You can say that. And yeah. Yeah, that's that's about it. That's I think that's all the let me actually Pluto. Okay. Pluto is sextiling Mars in Aquarius. Oh. Pluto sextile Mars in Aquarius. So uh Pluto being in Aquarius. I think Pluto's retrograde. Yeah, Pluto's retrograde, 151. It's uh, uh, in one degree, 56 minutes. <clears throat> okay. So, and Mars being in Aries. Okay, so it's sextile. So, this is uh, the, the opportunities to... Is it Aquarius or Aries? Mars in the Aries, Pluto in Aquarius. Pluto in Aquarius. All right. I'm grateful. So this is the sextile, the uh, opportunity to transform or take power and control over our passions. Okay. As far as, you know, wherever Pl Pluto being Aquarius, you know, this is to, you know, take part in control over your networking, your associations, you know, and with this, with the sextile and Mars, you know, these, both these planets sort of have a harmonious sex, meaning that they both rule the same signs, you know, so with Mars being in Aries, you know, the sextile and Pluto, really this time our passions were really to take power and control and sort of like, you know, really go for our passions by ourselves, you know, really, and head first, you know? But Pluto, I mean, Mars is uh, 22 degree, 51 minutes before I hop into Taurus. You know, 
So as far as that, those are the energies you're gonna be feeling. You know, so yeah. Those are the energies you should look out for. The first say signing out. Peace to the gods and goddesses. X the God. I love myself. Catch you next now. Free to three.